Hey, Kupion, how's it going? So uh, I'm Gabe. I'm a CNCF board member. Uh, rep uh, you know, I represent Microsoft on the board of CNCF. Um, I also head up uh, the container services and, and products at Azure. But I want to talk today about service mesh. Smart endpoints, dumb pipes. The network's job is to forward packets. That's it. Any logic for things like compression or identity, all that lives inside of the network endpoints. Now, this is how we've designed networks for the past 25 years. You could say it's worked pretty well. The entire internet is kind of premised on it. But today, with the explosion of microservices, containers, uh, Kubernetes, you know, how do we manage things like routing, telemetry, and policy when the network is constantly changing? Well, the answer is you build smarter pipes. And that's exactly what service mesh technology is. Um, it makes the network smarter, much smarter. Instead of teaching your services to encrypt sessions, uh, authorize clients, emit reasonable telemetry, seamlessly shift traffic between application versions, service mesh technology pushes this logic into the network, controlled by a separate set of management APIs. Now, today, vendors are providing uh, lots of exciting options for you know, how you can use Service Mesh. Istio from Google and IBM has lots of features, very popular in the Kubernetes community. Console from HashiCorp does a great job uh, extending the concept of a Service Mesh beyond Kubernetes, providing solutions for things like VM to container connectivity that can really help you out in more diverse environments. Linkerd, beloved for being extremely lightweight, uh, performant, great user experience, also the only CNCF project out of the bunch. And who knows what service mesh technology might come next. Now, the challenge, of course, is that when you integrate with one of these mesh technologies, um, you, you have to write to those uh, APIs directly. And once you do that, you become locked into the implementation. Without generic interfaces, developers lose portability, flexibility, uh, the ability to benefit from innovation across the broad ecosystem. That is about to change. Today, in partnership with many ecosystem partners, I'm excited to announce Service Mesh Interface. SMI defines a common portable set of APIs that provide developers with interoperability across different service mesh technologies, including Istio, uh, Linkerd, and Console Connect. Now, if you're running applications, building tooling, or part of the cloud native vendor ecosystem, integrating with a service uh, uh, mesh technology is a messy affair. So what we did was we joined forces with Linkerd, HashiCorp, uh, the folks at Solo, uh, and others to build an initial implementation that features the top three features we hear from our customers. Number one, policy. How do we make it easy to assign identities and policies between services, things like MTLS? Number two, telemetry. How do we make it easy to capture key metrics, like latency and error rate? Number three, routing. How do we make it easy to shift and wait traffic between services? Now, if what you need from a service mesh is part of this initial SMI specification, taking advantage of the service mesh ecosystem now just requires one integration to the SMI APIs. Now, this is just the beginning of what we hope to accomplish with SMI. Uh, with many exciting new capabilities under development in the service mesh space, we fully expect the SMI uh, uh, specification to evolve new capabilities over time. Now, I also want to point out that this idea is not new. This is not a new concept. The idea behind Service Mesh Interface follows in the footsteps of existing Kubernetes resources like Ingress or Network Policy. So like Ingress, SMI does not provide an implementation itself. Instead, SMI specification defines a common set of APIs which allows mesh providers to deliver their own best of breed solutions. The cloud native ecosystem has always valued interfaces and modular design. SMI is now just applying the same principle to the world of Service Mesh. So let me show you how this works. We're going to start with a traffic split example powered by Istio using the SMI APIs. So the traffic split API in SMI allows apps to control traffic weights. So in this demo, we're using Flagger from Weaveworks to run an automated canary deployment, which will gradually shift traffic from a current version to a candidate version. Now, if the response times remain within limits, Flagger will continue to advance the deployment, increasing the amount of traffic to the candidate version. 
Now, interestingly, Flagger has been updated uh, with SMI support. In fact, I saw it already got merged into master uh, for the Traffic Shift API. So, um, you know, this is this is very real today. And you know, really, what makes this possible is this idea of a SMI to Istio adapter that's deployed and watching for updates to the Traffic Split API, reconfiguring Istio automatically. Second, traffic metrics. In this demo, Linkerd is serving up an application workload that tracks requests per second and latencies across a few percentiles. Now, this is also running something called the SMI metric server, which presents a standard API for how to collect traffic metrics from Linkerd or other service meshes. So what you can see here is we've registered a new aggregated API server that's providing these metric endpoints. And if we query for the different metrics, you can see there's five metrics that we're now collecting. And if we actually go ahead and fetch those metrics, we'll go through the Kubernetes API, go directly through aggregated API directly to Linkerd, and pull out response latencies, success, failure count, that sort of thing. Now, we can use that in the ecosystem with tooling like KubeCost, which is a tool for cost allocation and management, um, which has also been updated to uh, use SMI for traffic metrics. Here, KubeCost is running a meter for cost per 1,000 requests. So SMI metrics allows tools like KubeCost to automatically gain these multi-mesh capabilities through interoperability. Lastly, traffic policy. So um, this is an example of a, a two-service application with a front end and a back end powered by Console Connect. To begin, the front end service can't contact the back end service. You can see that error here. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to deploy the SMI adapter for Console. In this case, it's going to read the SMI APIs dynamically configure console connect on the back end. Now, um, what we do next is we're going to create something called a traffic policy resource. And this assigns sort of a, a source and destination, all based on identities, that ultimately provide uh, you know, MTLS and, and sort of a, a policy-based uh, routing inside the cluster. Now, as soon as this API is submitted, the SMI uh, adapter for console will notice the update, configure the intention inside of console, and the service will uh, link up automatically secured with, it, with a, uh, a secure TLS tunnel. Now, the inverse of this is also true. If you go in and you delete the API for this, it's actually going to pull down the intention uh, inside of console, tear down the tunnel, tear down the policy, uh, and you know, the uh, connection to the back end service will go away. So why are we so excited about SMI? Well, first, customers want service mesh technology. That much is clear. But they're confused about how to get it. SMI allows uh, folks to get started quickly. Next, we believe that simpler is better. There's lots and lots of features out there by service mesh you know, in service mesh space, but customers don't always need all of them. Um, SMI provides a nice, clean subset of, of those features, uh, and it's something that I think is very attractive and hopefully going to uh, uh, really uh, jumpstart adoption in the service mesh space. Lastly, SMI is ecosystem friendly. End users want to support innovation in open source. SMI provides a level of interoperability that we at Microsoft deem critical to advancing state of the art in the industry. All right. Um, want to learn more about SMI? Check out this link. Otherwise, thanks everyone. Have a great KubeCon.